हेलो यस मैं बताओ या या ओके आई वाज नॉट एबल टू स्टार्ट द रिकॉर्डिंग सो दैट्स व्हाई आई ओ इज इट ओके so i keep on seeing the participants just leaving and then joining back like that right so i was like somebody yeah you joined late that is why okay oh okay okay, okay. let everyone join then we'll start sure sure is my screen visible yes sir yes okay yes sir now is my desktop visible yes yeah yes sir okay Okay, so we'll start grammar of Java code. So, what is grammar? Every language has a specific grammar. Every language has a specific grammar. like if you talk about human specific language like hindi english chinese urdu sanskrit they all have their specific grammar and if you talk about computer programming languages it also has specific grammar so what is a grammar grammar is a set of uh, rules and regulations which governs the communication and grammar is a set of the uh, rules and regulations which governs the communication and what is a language language is a medium to communicate or it is the name of a grammar it is the name of a grammar like if we have a grammar number of alphabets a b c d e noun pronoun verb adjective article preposition and the grammar name is english so you can also say english is a language and uh, if you want to communicate in a specific language you have to know the specific grammar of that particular language because every language has a specific grammar if you want to learn any specific language you have to know you have to learn the specific grammar at most without knowing the grammar you will not be able to communicate in any specific language so grammar is everything okay so whether it is java c c++ python or hindi english chinese urdu tamil telugu whatever the language is every language has a specific grammar okay so we have to know the grammar at first so what comes first in any language's grammar the first thing is character set means set of characters 
supported by a specific language. So if you talk about English language, we have 26 alphabets, small letters, capital letters, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, R, like their pronunciations. A, B, C, D are sign symbols. So what is a character set? Character set is a set of characters supported by a specific language. So there are so many character sets, but, but uh, the languages which we know, like C and C++ supports ASCII character set. Java supports Unicode character set. So ASCII and Unicode are character sets. Like they have their own specific set of characters. So ASCII is of one byte. Unicode is of two bytes. In one byte, one byte means eight bit. 8 bit means 2 to the power 8 equal to 256. It means 0 to 255. It means in S key, we have total 256 characters, which are numbered through 0 to 255. And in Java, it is Unicode, 2 bytes. 2 bytes means 16 bits. 16 bit, bit means 2 to the power 16. It means 65,536. It means 0 to 65,535. So in Unicode or in Java, if Java supports Unicode, it means Java has total 65,536 characters, which are numbered through 0 to 65,535. There are total 256 characters with C and C++ supports because it supports ASCII character set. That is why the size of care data type in C and C++ is one byte and in Java is two bytes. This is the reason why Java has two bytes for a single character and why C, C++ has one byte for a single character. So the size of care data type depends on the character set of the specific language it supports. So C, C++ has one byte because of ASCII and Java has two bytes because of Unicode, universal code. It means in Java, there are total 65,536 characters, Hindi, English, Bengali, Urdu, Chinese, Spanish, Japanese, Every sign symbol is there in Java. Okay. So this is the character set. Comma, full stop, everything is available in Java and C, C++ also. But like Kaka Gaga, ABCD, like not ABCD, uh, Hindi language, Sanskrit language, Tamil, Telugu, Uriya, Nepali, Japanese, Chinese, Spanish, Russian. They are not available in ASCII, okay? But they are available in Java, Unicode. So this is the reason why C, C++ has one byte of character and Java has two bytes for a single character. Now, let's start with tokens. So what is a token? Token is the smallest individual unit of a program or you can also say a program is a collection of tokens what is a token token is the smallest individual unit of a program a program's smallest individual unit and if it is the smallest individual individual unit it means a program is a collection of tokens because multiple tokens make a program. If you write a program, what you do in a program? You just write tokens, you use tokens. So what tokens are there? 
and doesn't matter it is java or c or c++ or python every programming language has five tokens but like inside the tokens there are some differences but number of tokens are five for every programming language okay so what are those tokens the first one is reserve keyword second one identifier third one operator fourth one separator fifth one literal reserve keyword identifier operator separator literal okay i'll not not like go in very detail of all these topics because like these are basic things okay we have to complete the grammar part as soon as possible so that like we could start with object oriented concept that is the important part okay so reserve keyword means reserved keywords are reserved words which all have some specific meaning in a computer program for example int float cat double boolean byte short if else switch case go to class private public protected extends implements import final try catch throw throws finally these all are reserved keywords java reserve keywords and just go to oracle website docs.oracle.com it means documentation java language keywords these are reserve keywords in java this synchronized switch throw throws transient try void volatile while these all are reserved keywords they all have some specific meaning if you want to perform some specific task you have to use specific keyword like for is reserved for specific purpose and package is reserved for specific purpose return is reserved for specific purpose every reserved keyword has some specific meaning in a program okay every reserved keyword has a specific meaning in a program so these are reserved keywords identifier you have to know very well identifier means name okay any name is an identifier like uh, noun in english any name object name human name animal name plant name tree name whatever the name it is is called noun so whatever the name here is an identifier identifier is a naming convention which is used to give meaningful names in a computer program you have to use meaningful names if you are creating suppose if you are creating uh, declaring a variable and you are writing int a comma b comma c and uh, c equal to a plus b it is okay grammatically it is correct it will not raise any kind of syntax error grammatically it is correct but it is meaningless meaningless means you have to like know the function of any name with the name itself then it is meaningful like suppose if we are declaring with another type like num1 num2 some sum equal to num1 plus num2 this is meaningful this is also syntactically correct the syntax of this, these two lines are also correct but this is meaningful this is meaningless so you have to remember always that you have to use meaningful names this is the rule of java community for developers developers rule you should not use these kind of names for anything like class name interface name method name you have to use meaningful names this is meaningful you can make it more meaningful also like number 1 number 2 some it is okay 
but still it is okay like anyone can understand what is the purpose of these three variables and what we are doing here okay so if you are working on a project a live project or a software you have to follow the concept of identifier okay so what are the rules and regulations the first one is name should be meaningful okay uh use title case for class or interface or enum name if you are creating a class or an interface or an enum always remember you have to use title case title case means suppose our class name is even number title case means first letter of every word should be capital if your class or interface or enum has more than one word if they have more than one word then the first letter of every word should be capital for class interface enum use camel case see here t is capital c is small and this c is capital for method or variable name example get data even number if you are creating a method like function okay and if you are declaring a variable so you have to use camel case like this get data even number sum of even numbers see s is small after that first letter of every next word is capital use lower case for package name if you are creating a package always use lower case if you have more than one word like two or more words in a single name you can also join them using underscore like uh, even underscore number okay. don't use reserve keywords it is syntax error like int float int float what does it mean it means you are declaring a variable named float it is wrong you cannot use reserved keywords as an identifier for any name you cannot use reserved keywords for writing class names or method names or package name you cannot use they are reserved for specific purpose okay they are reserved for specific purpose you cannot use them for other purposes okay it is case sensitive it means lower case and upper case are different example in a comma capital a it is correct this is these two variables are different 
like small a equal to five, capital A equal to five, both are different. It is okay, but there are few languages which are not case sensitive, like HTML is not case sensitive. Okay, so this is the rule which you have to follow. Always try to uh, use small names because you have to write names so many times. You have to use the names. So if you use like like long text names, so it will be very difficult. Write it again and again, and like uh, you might get some kind of like syntax error, spelling mistake. Okay. So always try to use small names. Okay. So these are the rules of an identifier. Identifier means any name. Name means identifier. Operator. Operator is a sign or symbol which is used to Evaluate arithmetical and logical expressions. What is an operator? Plus minus into divide, plus plus minus minus, and or not. They all are sign symbols and they are used to evaluate arithmetical and logical expressions because computer only work with arithmetical and logical expressions because inside the CPU we have ALU arithmetic logic unit plus CU plus CPU registers. Operation means CPU also has its own internal memory. You can also store data in CPU register, but they are limited. CU means control unit. It generates the control signal to the ALU that what to do what to perform, when to perform, how to perform, from where to perform, from where to get data, from where to get instructions, where to load instructions into memory. So it generates control signal to the ALU and ALU then works according to the signal generated by control unit CU. So what kind of operations ALU performs? Arithmetic and logic. Arithmetic means C plus four, it is arithmetic. A greater than B and B less than D. And or not means logical values. And logical values always like logical expressions. Okay. This is arithmetical expression and this is logical expression. Logical expression always returns you logical value means true or false okay after like processing logical expressions you will get logical values either true or false and arithmetical expression will return you arithmetical value okay so there are so many operators you will also go through the operators you can also check the youtube so again about the CPU registers, what were you saying about the CPU? Sorry? What were you saying about the CPU? Sorry, I just missed it. CPU okay. was a control unit, right? Yeah, uh, ALU, uh, it is not like related to Java. I just told this uh -huh. as it is, okay. So CPU, uh -huh. like we have a CPU in computer. Yeah. That is why it is called computer. Calculators are not computers, okay. Uh, you can see there are so many electronic devices. They are not computers. And uh, in computer's definition, what we see, like uh, every computer is an electronic device or electronic machine. So every computer is an electronic machine, but every electronic machine is not a computer. Okay. So what you have to have in an electronic machine to make it a computer? CPU. Calculator is an electronic device. It is not a computer because it does not have 
CPU. Your air conditioner, AC, refrigerator, or like there are so many devices which are electronic, but they are not computers because they don't have CPU. If they have CPU, then they are computers. To become a computer, it has to have a CPU inside it. Okay. So what we see inside a CPU? ALU, CU, and CPU registers. What are CPU registers? Like RAM. It is also a primary memory. Volatile. When its power is on, like computer's power is on, it will work. And you can also store data in CPU register. So CPU registers are like a kind of memory. CU, control unit. ALU, arithmetic logic unit. So computer only performs arithmetic and logical operation. You cannot perform other operations except arithmetic and logic. It only performs arithmetic and logical operations. And this is the unit. This is a section or department or something where arithmetic and logical expressions are evaluated. And how does computer understand that what to do, when to do? CPU generates the control signal. Sorry, CU generates the control signal to the ALU that what to do. How to get the data? Where to get the instructions from? Understand? Niveda? Yes, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, operators, uh, you have like have to see yourself. Like these are basic things. What is like the result of plus minus into divide plus plus minus minus less than greater than less than greater than means they will always return you logical values, true or false. So. You have to go through the operators list yourself. Now, one thing you have to know is uh, um, operator precedence and associativity in Java. In every language, we have operators precedence and associativity PDF. This is the list of Java operators with their precedences and associativity. Precedence means priority. Like this is the function or method. Okay. So method invocation. If there is an expression and inside an expression, you have this kind of sign or symbol. You first have to execute this thing. Then this then member action selection or you can also say period okay so member selection plus plus minus minus plus plus minus minus prefix and postfix if it is postfix you have to evaluate it at first then you will be executing prefix A unary plus unary minus exclamation means not negation okay these are having same priority. These are having same priority. Okay. These are having same priority because these are in a single row. These are in a single row. I think it is not correct. Yeah. See, these are not like high, low, 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 low. These are equal, equal priority. Okay. 12 number, equal priority. 11, equal priority. 10, equal priority. 9, all are equal priority. 8, both are equal priority. And these are like 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. So these are like having lower priority than these operators. Okay. So if you get more than one operator with the same priority in a, sing in a single expression, so which operator you have to execute first? Suppose these all three operators are having same priority. 
they are having same priority okay so which operator we will execute first if they are different if they are having different priority so no problem higher priority operator will be executed first then lower priority but if we have more than one operator with the same priority in a single expression so which operator we should execute first you have to follow associativity rule left to right or right to left any problem you have to use associativity rule okay so this is the use of operator precedence table and associativity associativity means and it is not possible to remember everything so like we have to search on google every time like if you forget which operator has higher priority okay so if you have more than one operator with the same priority in a single expression so you have to use associativity rule and if they are different priority no problem higher priority will be executed first any problem or it is clear hmm what is a separator separator is a sign symbol used to separate tokens it itself token separator is itself a token which separates other tokens white space means space comma dot single quote double quote underscore these are like separators okay suppose int ab semicolon semicolon is also a separator it is a single variable but if i write comma here now it is two variables okay it is wrong space now it is correct space is a separator space we call it white space white space means space okay so separators are also sign symbols used to separate other tokens literal means value whatever the value is whatever the data type is like the data types in java byte short int long short double boolean cat these are the data types in java okay so number of data types we have number of literal values we have for byte these all four as like integer data type these all four data types are integer data types don't consider this only as integer data type these all four data types are integer but why we have four data types for integer for memory like if you want to store small value okay so you can store it in one byte so if you can store a value in one byte memory so what is the need to take 4 bytes or 10 bytes or 100 bytes memory if it is possible to store it in one byte so the the only difference is in their sizes short 2 bytes in 4 bytes long 8 bytes okay so we have literal value means byte literal short literal int literal long literal float literal double literal boolean literal char literal
okay what value you can store in boolean either true or false here is two bytes you can store unicode characters float and double both are like both in both uh, data types you can store uh, fraction values but float for example 3.5 f and here 3.5 it means if you don't write f it means it is double if you want to represent point value in float you have to write f otherwise by default it is double every fraction value without small f at the end every programming language like c c++ java python php dotnet every programming language will consider it double and if you want to represent it in float you have to write f so by default every point value is double okay so we have integer literal float literal double literal character literal boolean literal byte literal short literal int literal long literal so whatever data type you have every kind of literal we have okay so literal means value so we have just completed tokens now let's see an example class test okay public static void min so this is a basic java program to declare three integer variables initialize two variables add them and print the sum okay now you tell me what is this according to token can anyone tell me what is this among five tokens identifier no it is reserved keyword reserved keyword okay. what is this space separator okay. okay this is the class name what is it that's a identifier identifier what this is separator public keyword space keyword space separator static keyword space keyword separator okay chalo thoda sa hum bata dete hain void reserve keyword space separator what is main identifier hmm it is a method name main main method method name identifier separator identifier class name okay space separator variable name identifier separator 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 reserve keyword separator identifier operator sorry separator identifier separator identifier separator identifier operator literal separator identifier operator literal separator it means in every program every project every software doesn't matter 
how big it is you have only five things and in every programming language also c c plus java python any programming language we have five tokens these are the building blocks of a program of a software okay so we have completed tokens we have also discussed data types but let's discuss about it there like minimum maximum ranges on internet sometimes like we see uh the range data types range in java okay in java data types see byte one byte one byte means what number of bits 8 bits 8 means 8 bits bit full form of bit is binary digit so 8 bits uh 1 bit will be for sign like positive and negative and 7 bit will be to store value so 7 bit we have 2 to the power 7 minus 2 to the power 7 minimum and plus 2 to the power 7 minus 1 maximum minus 2 to the power 7 minus 128 2 to the power 7 means 128 And plus two to the power seven minus one. So why minus one? Two to the power seven, one twenty-eight. Minus one means from zero to one twenty-seven. Minus one twenty-eight to minus one, and zero to one twenty-seven. So how it is calculated from this? One byte means eight bit. Eight bit. One bit will be for this sign, positive and negative. If it is positive, zero will be stored into the sign, and if it is negative, one will be stored. Okay, and rest seven bits will be to store data. So minus two to the power seven, and this is plus two to the power seven minus one. Short two bytes. Two bytes means sixteen bits. So one bit will be for minus and plus sign, and fifteen bits will be for data. So minus two to the power fifteen, two to the power fifteen minus one. Four bytes means thirty-two bits. One bit will be for sign, and thirty-one bit will be for data value magnitude. Okay, so thirty-one minus two to the power thirty-one plus two to the power thirty-one minus one. Eight bytes, sixty-four bits. In sixty-four, one bit will be for positive negative, and sixty-three bits will be for data. So minus two to the power sixty-three, two to the power sixty-three minus one. Okay, that is how we calculate. It means if you want to store data between minus one twenty eight and one ten seven, always use byte. If you can store a value in one byte memory, why to take four bytes? If you want to store zero to nine, so you can store it in a byte. Why to take integer data? Right? Okay, so. you have to like maintain the efficiency of the code you always have to maintain the efficiency of your program of your code and the uh, the efficiency of a program depends on two things program efficiency depends on two things like the first one is number of lines you have written and memory space so you have to take less memory space you have to write less number of lines suppose if you have written 20 lines and i have written 10 lines for the same output my program will be executing faster as compared to your program okay so always you have to remember uh, like you have to write less number of lines less number of memory spaces you have to take so that's all for today okay that's all for today's class so is there anything which you have doubt or anyone had doubt
in today's class tomorrow we'll be starting conditional statements like if else control statements and day after tomorrow we'll be working with loops and then object oriented concept so that's all for today i'll share you the link okay if you have any doubt you can ask me otherwise uh, vishal uh, just one thing mm -hmm. uh, you told like uh, the java is using the two bytes right uh, initially uh, that c okay. is using the ascii and uh, this unicode so yeah for char that right only for char that one eh? yeah okay 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 char means character character uh, day 3 see okay char data type so the size of char data type is in c and c++ is 1 byte and in java it is 2 bytes so what is the reason so the reason is the character set because java supports unicode character set and c c++ support ascii character set and ascii is 1 byte it means inside ascii we have 256 characters and inside unicode we have this number of characters okay okay thanks anyone else any question nivedita uh, niveda no sir thank you okay then that's all for today let's connect tomorrow okay